the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Hello everybody. We're so glad you could join us today right here on Bill Dance Outdoors. In this episode, Bill and his guest, fisheries biologist Freddie Langford will be fishing around several forms of aquatic vegetation, such as cattails, bulrushes, and hydrilla. Bill is an expert bass fisherman, and Freddie is an expert in the science of maintaining a productive pond or lake. The two make up a great team. Let's jump into the boat with these two anglers and see how much information we can gain from them as they fish along. Do you think vegetation is good for a body of water? Yes, sir. Yeah. Vegetation provides you know, what we call habitat, and habitat, uh, think of the word habitation, you think of home, it provides things you need. So it provides a surface area and cover, it provides cover for little animals to hide, but it also pro provides a surface area for little food chain organisms to grow, kind of like a coral reef. You think of saltwater, a coral reef, that surface area, there's a lot of life, it's a, it starts an ecosystem. So vegetation in a lake starts an ecosystem. And in some lakes, it's not uh, absolutely necessary, but in some lakes, the lakes are no good without it. So vegetation in a lake, I mean, it's good for reproductivity? Yes, sir. It's good for, do you think it's good for overall growth? It's good for survival, growth, and reproduction. So it's good for growth because it provides habitat for things that bass eat. If we're talking about bass, threadfin shad scatter their eggs on vegetation. Uh, aquatic invertebrates like may mayflies, damselflies, dragonflies, they live in that habitat. So it provides ingredients for the food chain that, that otherwise you would be limited to the bottom substrate as a surface area. Right. And if that bottom substrate has silt and muck on it, then it's not viable. But too much vegetation is detrimental. Too much vegetation is detrimental because then your productivity, if you look at these food pyramid diet, you know, models, you're trying to produce the top end, which would be the bass, in, in, in your case, what you're interested in, and me too. So if all your productivity is locked up in vegetation, then you don't get the, you don't get the balance, and therefore you don't get the top end predator. You, you, all your productivity becomes locked up in vegetation. Let's say if the pond is covered with water, floating vegetation. Mama. Hello. Oh, that's strong. Yeah, yeah. Okay, say ah. Uh, <laughs> say ah. Uh, I can't knock it out. It gets right in that one hard spot in their mouth. There it is. That's a pretty one, isn't it? Beautiful. Smile. <laughs> okay. Toodles. Time to say adios. Here we go. Gone. Bill Dance Outdoors. Sponsored by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Rebel. 
catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine, go boldly. Today's Conditions Log is brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Come experience the kind of beauty that can only be made in Tennessee. Go online today for your free Tennessee vacation guide. Got him that time. Oh, that's a good one. Well, I saw him underwater and he looked, looked really good. Look here. That's nice. One hit me about the same time he dropped it. Hello. Come up here. All right, I'm not fishless anymore. There you go. This is a male. How can you tell? If you look at the second opening, the one back toward the back side. Yeah. If you hold it up like that, it's indented this way. If it were a female, there'd be a little, a little raised area here, and it would have a, uh, a little color to it, a little reddish color. It would also have a little shape of a triangle around it, the point rounded off. Okay, like this one right here. What is that? It's another male. Because of the little indentation right here. That little opening back here. Yeah. See, it has no color, no red, no pink. Is it always that year round? With a male, it's going to be colorless and, and round. But, and in, with a female in June would have pink right there? Oh, she'd still, she'd still have eggs that she hasn't reabsorbed yet. Yeah, but so the male always has that little indentation right there. Yeah, it'll go year anywhere. round. Yeah, year round. He'll never, okay. he'll never have a pimple. Okay. And the female looks like a pimple. Okay. So, so far, all these fish we've caught are males. You know, I'm looking at all this hydrilla. What good is hydrilla? I mean, it, does it have a good purpose? You know, actually, Bill, it does have a good purpose. Like all submersed aquatics, it provides a lot of habitat be below the surface. So it helps little organisms um, survive, and those little organisms feed largemouth bass. So you can take a lake that has been depleted of largemouth bass. Its environment is no longer uh, good enough quality to support them. And a hyper-eutrophic lake is what we'd be talking about. And pea soup green, too much phytoplankton, and you can take hydrilla and restore that lake. You don't need the whole lake to be covered. So, no, so in other words, what you're saying, you could just take a, a bad lake and turn it into a good lake with hydrilla. Yes, you could. Really? You could, but you could also do that with coontail, eelgrass, um, and other submersed aquatics. Uh, you don't have, the good thing about hydrilla is it's easy to grow. The bad thing is it grows too much. I don't know, that's a better one. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. Here. Oh yeah. Uh, he looks bigger in the water, doesn't he? Yeah. Looks bigger underwater. That's, not, that's bigger. Hey, than, hey. That's bigger than the average bear. About two and a half. You through? Well, come up here and say hi to me. Say hi to me. That's pretty. It's a female. It's a girl. You, you see that? See that red? How red that pimple is? Uh huh. Right there. Yeah, that's that's the sign that she spawned. I've caught a couple. It was pink and not puck, you know, not pimpled up like that. Freddie, let me ask you this question. Okay. Does a lake have to have cover to be a good lake? It doesn't have to. You can have a good lake without it. You know, it's about the productivity. Uh, you can have productivity within the water column, plankton, feeding plankton, feeding fish, plankton, feeding zooplankton, and you can have good bottom substrate, good clean bottom, sandy, rocky substrate. So if you have poor substrate though, or if you have an old lake, like the lake has aged and accumulated a lot of sediment so that the bottom substrate's not good, then you need vegetation. Today's show is brought to you in part by Quantum Rods and Reels, Quantum Performance Tuned. 
Mystic Lubricants, Lubrication Domination. And Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest. Today's show is sponsored in part by Berkeley, Catch More Fish. Bill Dance Exclusive Rods by Quantum. And by Garmin, Fight Your Fish, Not Your Fish Finder. Today's Equipment Log is brought to you by Gamakatsu, because the fish of a lifetime only comes once in a lifetime. Freddie and I are using today. We're using Bass Pro Shops Tournament Series Ribbon Tail Worm, 10 inches long and a black light color. We're also flipping one of Bass Pro Shops half ounce football jigs. It's a tungsten jig and we've got a trailer. It's the Swimming Elite Chunk. It's got a solid body with two little flappers on the back. What I like about this particular chunk, it's got the solid body as I said and it stays on the hook. The um, particular uh, worm hook we're using is made by Gamakatsu. It's a, a G-finish hybrid worm hook. The hook point is higher than the hook eye, so on the hook set all the force is transferred to the hook point. You'll miss very few fish with this particular hook. And we're using both the five and six off size. And the attractant we're using is made by Berkeley. It's their gulp alive in the Chad Shiner flavor. Must be rock or something on this bottom right here. I feel, feel stuff. Is it sand? You feel any rough stuff? Yeah, sometimes I feel. Oh, I got a hit. I got. This is a nice one. You feel a rough bottom right in there? Yeah, I was feeling some rough stuff right there when yeah. I got this hit. Oh, this thing, this thing's heavy. There's some rough stuff in there. Mm. Oh, oh, don't you go in that troll on that motor, in that Power Pro? Come on, wear out, fish. Wear out now. <laughs> Don't wear, wear me out, out fish. Huh? <laughs> wear out, fish. Come on. Give up. Give, give up. up. Who, who you want to give up? You. <laughs> <laughs> give up, fish. <laughs> I get crazy. Silly crazy. fish. Give up, fish. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on now. Oh, 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 baby. Let him fight. Okay. If he wants to go under, let him go. Oh, oh that one's got some horsepower. You want me to help you with it? Yeah, please. I don't want to lose this thing. Uh, how do you do? He did yeah. good. <laughs> oh, good. Sorry. Watch your rod tip. Uh, uh, you got it? Yeah, I got him. He's hooked good. Okay. Let me turn him around. Oh, got Thank him. you. Thank you. I got it. There he is. Mm. Nice chunky little old bass. That's sweet. Nice little girl fish. Yeah. Fat too. Yes, sir. You want me to let her go? Heck yeah. Catch her again sometime. Okay. We gotta look at the water. Ready to go? There we go. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. A lot of people that have a small body of water fertilizing their lake. So how important is fertilizing the lake? Yeah, keeping their lake fertile. And a small, small body of water. Small say, body of water. Say you've got a lake that's five, 10 acres, 15 acres. Mm -hmm. Keeping that lake fertile. If it's not naturally fertile, in other words, if you don't have runoff from the land, right. you know, agricultural practices that fertilize it, right. then you need to fertilize it. Or you're going to have a very low productivity. So you, you need to keep it, keep it limed, and keep it, it limed. Yes, sir. You need to lime it because that that aids the fertilization. That changes the chemistry so that the nitrogen and phosphorus are more available. So it's important to lime it if it if it needs to be limed. If you test it and the total alkalinity or calcium carbonate hardness is already high enough, you don't need to lime it. 
But you see all these little bugs flying around? Yeah. Though they, this habitat, this grass and stuff is essential because sometimes the bottom is, doesn't have enough, uh, the quality of the substrate of the bottom isn't good enough. It could have uh, organic silt on it. So that little larvae of that flying insect right there is living in muck. There's a fish right there. So if he's got uh, vegetation to attach to a clean surface area, uh, it's beneficial. The Bill Dance Question and Answer of the Week is brought to you by Bill Dance Exclusive Rods by Quantum. Whether you're fishing for panfish, bass, catfish, or light salt water, we have an action for you. Available at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Does anyone make a rod holder for a rectangular rail that comes on some pontoon boats? Yep, they do. Millennium Marine. This rod holder is universal to fit most boat railings regardless if they're round, square, or flat and has 180 to 360 degree rod adjustments. Made with anodized aluminum and comes with a one year warranty. Today's show is sponsored in part by Berkeley, catch more fish. Bill Dance exclusive rods by Quantum. And by Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin GPS Map Series Chart Plotter Sonar Combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Panoptics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. I do a lot of bass and crappie fishing in the flooded timbered areas, and my 9.9 .9 Mercury on my 14-foot Trekker John boat is perfect for idling down. What this does, it allows me to maneuver around standing timber and cover, and it enables me to get exactly where I want to go very quietly. I simply love it, and it's a perfect outboard for me in those sometimes hard to get to spots. Come be part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Okay, okay. Hey, I'll get him. Hold on. He comes to you. Come on, bud. Just catch it. There you go. That's definitely a female. Pink pipple? Yeah. All right, we're going home. Bye-bye. You know, I hear the question a lot. Ponds that are covered with aquatic floating plants, like duckweed, lettuce, hyson, lily pads that uh, create fish kills. What can you do about that? So if you have a lake that's covered with a floating aquatic, like duckweed, yeah. or water meal, or water hyacinths, or water lettuce, no sunlight, as you said, can get into the water column. And that creates oxygen, right? The sunlight. photosynthesis in the water column is where, the, where oxygen comes from. Photosynthesis of phytoplankton in the water column. Right. And submerged plants like hydrilla can photosynthesize and it can be released into the water column. Right. But it doesn't come from the atmosphere. It has to come from below the surface tension of the water. Yeah. So sunlight has to go into the water. It, and it can't get into the water if you have duckweed or water meal or a total blockage. A total blockage. Yeah. So the only option you have is to kill it. You have to get rid of it. A lot of people are concerned about using herbicides, but the herbicides that are approved for aquatic use are safe. They break down into natural elements and they're effective. They work. Uh, so if you leave a lake covered with water hyacinths. Not only do you not get photosynthesis in the water column, but you get a, a big deposit of organic plant material from the growing and dying of the plant. So it's better to go ahead and bring that to an end than, 
than to, you know, than to leave it. Because if you leave it, you get more sedimentation than you do from killing it. And when you kill it, there are bacteria in the water that break it down, and it just gets cycled back into productivity. Come, whoa, baby. Oh, 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 you see that? That's nice. What you got there? He's got me. He got you? Up under the boat. All right. I see that me, worm just flouncing. You want me to get him? Yeah. Oh. Wow. He's just a, just a steamboat to all he is. Look at that. Yeah, look, look at that uh, bulging like it's been too, spawning it? there, see? Like yeah. eggs have been coming out recently there. Watch her jump. No, she didn't jump. I thought she was going to jump on me. Ooh, that fish fought. That was nice there. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. I love a good fight. Yeah. We all know that time marches on. And at some point, we have to quit for the day. That time is right now. Tune in next week for Bassin Aquatic Vegetation, Part 2, and more information you can use on your next outing. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. No, I'm going fishing with Bill Dance today.